Oh, hey, there we go. Hey, Apuru, good to have you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, thanks, thanks. How are so, you? Yeah, I'm I'm good. How are you guys? Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Your background here. What is this background that you're using today? <laughs> it, 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 it's, 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 it's not my home. <laughs> it's it's a virtual background. <laughs> Oh yeah, I wish it was my home as well. <laughs> oh, so I am wearing this this T-shirt. Uh, if you are able to see, Steer Khan. Okay, Steer Khan. Okay, and you know this is the topic for the day for you, right? It's Steer. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna teach everyone on the call and for the for the viewers on the on the YouTube recording post event, like what to do uh, or Steer Steer Service Mesh One One, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of uh, myths, uh, and uh, I could say how to use, when to use, what to use, and is it only the fancy technology that I can integrate in the Kubernetes or not? Yes, 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 so yes. Definitely, definitely, it will be a very basic, but it 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 will be more around the deep technical stuff that that I'm throwing mm. on the uh, on the audience. <laughs> All right, fantastic, fantastic, Apoorv, and, and thanks a lot for joining in. So, so guys, Apoorv is joining us from from Thoughtworks. He is a senior infrastructure consultant there, living in Pune, and he is doing a lot of stuff around cloud native and uh, Kubernetes, CI/CD, observability, and and service mesh, one one. Uh, Oh, service mesh Istio, and you know, 101, 201, or 301, I would say. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure about that. So, so Apurva, uh, walk us through in, in, in the wild, wild weeds of uh, uh, service mesh and Istio. The floor is all yours. Yeah. So, I'm just screen, uh, sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Your screen is. Uh, yes, we can see your screen. All right, take it up. Just a second. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just uh, switching the tab. OK. Uh, so yeah, uh, so today we'll uh, just uh, look for the service mesh with 101. Uh, here, uh, for next 30 minutes, I'm bombarding a lot of technical concepts. So it's not, uh, if you if you look at the topic itself, so if you are just thinking that this is the only the basic stuff, uh, and that is available on the internet it's it's, it's not but it, it's more a uh, deep insight on the service mesh and istio and how how it is running behind the scene uh some guys if you know that is fine if no not i i'm just going to explain each and everything so i'm just starting from the scratch uh how uh, uh traffic is traffic flowing inside the kubernetes cluster and then i will compare the same stuff with the service mesh so you will you'll get an understanding and idea how service mesh is working. So let's get started. Uh, uh, for, before starting uh, starting the session, I'm just uh, I, I just hope uh, everyone should have uh, some idea about the Kubernetes and the service and how how network works in the Kubernetes, so that uh, it will be uh, helpful for each and everyone to understand those those concepts. So yeah, again uh, already done with my introduction so i'm not wasting my time over here uh, let's move on to the next slide so yeah so here uh, we'll see the uh, the introduction to the microservices uh, i'll not spend much more time on the microservices but then we'll go what is service mesh then we'll see the basic uh, networking in the kubernetes as i said then we'll go to the introduction to the service mesh uh, istio what are the offerings that you will get uh, from the istio then we'll see the tra traffic rou routing in, uh, with the help of Istio. And then we'll see the uh, traffic or the networking in the Kubernetes with the help of uh, basic network uh, Kubernetes networking versus the service mesh Istio networking. So you will get the deep insight about how traffic is flowing inside the cluster. So let's get started. So uh, in 21's era, everyone knows I, 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 uh, I, I will agree that the, everyone knows what is uh, microservices, how they, those works. So basically, it's uh, loosely coupled. It is running independently, is language independent. There are a lot of uh, free hands that you can do it. Uh, the, those services, uh, not like uh, monolithic services, they, those are independently. Those, those can be owned by a small team. There are a lot of things that you can do with the resiliency. Durability, you can see, for example, you can take as a, an example of Amazon.com where you can go and purchase something. So uh, sometimes the payment system is down, but still site is working. So you can call it as a microservice type of architecture there. And th these are the, some of the microservices benefits. 
so uh, let's uh, let's move on to the microservice architecture here you can see in the slide we have multiple uh, microservices which are running when request comes down here one of the application which uses python java ruby node everything so uh, i am not restricting to anyone that you should use the python java or ruby or node it's it's again uh, totally language independent and those are loosely coupled i can send the traffic to the multiple uh, uh, multiple uh, applications and i uh, those uh, application will process that uh, data and you can get those results so here uh, you can see uh, first first of all the traffic is uh, served by the python application and python application is calling or sending those uh, api traffic to the java then ruby and the process data is now sending to the node.js application so you can see the, the these are the, some of the benefits of uh, using microservices rather than going into the monolithic one uh, so let's now deep dive into into the services in Kubernetes. Uh, if you look at the slides, there are a lot of things I bombard on the screen, but don't worry, I'm, I'm just going to explain what are all these things are. Uh, first, first on the top of uh, left uh, le left side on the top, you can see the cluster IP. Uh, right top, you can see the node port, and on the middle downside, you can see the node balancer. There is one more service which I haven't mentioned is external name. So if you look at the cluster IP, so here here is the top view you can say or how traffic is uh, flowing inside the cluster. Uh, one is uh, you can consider host one host B is a two two worker node which are running uh, with my cluster. So I have two uh, worker nodes with me and I have deployed nginx application inside that. And when flowing the traffic. How it flows it will come to the pod network it, it is again pointing out to the cube proxy and cube proxy is tra traffic sending those traffic to the pod so again uh, uh, cube proxy you can call it as a bunch of uh, ip tables where which which pre-configured or while deploying any services you can get those pre-configured stuff over there and you can see the uh, the traffic is flowing from uh, from uh, service to service. So if you consider the default service, so in, in, in the Kubernetes default service is cluster IP. So whenever you are exposing, a, uh, you are exposing any service within the cluster, it's, it's a, a, a cluster IP. If, if you haven't mentioned the type service IP, uh, sorry, cluster IP, it is by default, it is taking the cluster IP. Uh, if you look at the right hand side, it's node port. Uh, so in the diagram itself, you can see how you are accessing the application let's consider i have one ui based application i'm i want to access it outside the cluster so what i'll do i will expose the application uh, on the node port and so if you look at the access side so this you can consider as a user and from there i'm opening the port on the node so you can see the port is 30001 and from 30000 it is again sending the traffic to the cube proxy cube proxy taking those traffic to the to my pod so you can consider if i am opening the port on node port it is just opening the port on my node and that uh, that port again connecting to my cluster ip and cluster ip is sending those traffic to my pod so same in case of like uh, load balancer again if you uh, see the down, extreme down uh, image here you can see again the access is uh, you can consider as a user when he is trying to access the application uh, he, he 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 has the DNS of my load balancer or he has the IP of my load balancer and whenever he is trying to access my application it is it is just accessing to the node port node port to the cluster IP and so on so uh, these are the basic functionality I could say which which runs inside the cluster I will not go deep dive how IP tables is mentioned uh, maintaining by QProx and all the stuff because this is not a uh, part of this uh, session so next uh, next slide you can see this is the top top view of, of uh, any of the service if i am i'm deploying into the cluster so extremely light, uh, left hand side diagram if you look at that so here you can see now uh, uh, if you consider i have the top view of my kubernetes cluster uh, you can see there are nginx pods running inside my uh, nodes and here uh, i am accessing the application so uh, you can imagine the how traffic is flowing from my load balancer to my pod so first it will serve by your load balancer which is the external one uh, here i am considering as i am using eks or gke or uh, any cloud service provider which are offering like uh, uh, kubernetes managed services so once i expose the service so anyone accessing my application uh, which uh, 
the user will hit first to the DNS or my load balancer IP. And from there, uh, it will flow internally. So from that extra load balancer, it will come, come down to my uh, nodes, which are grouped together. So at the load balancer level, all the nodes IP will get grouped together and those traffic will come inside my cluster. So even if in case of uh, I'm considering uh, here, I'm uh, exposing the port on my node, you don't have to worry because load balancer is taking care of grouping of those nodes. So here, what I want to say, like the services uh, in Kubernetes implemented by kube proxy component, which runs on every node. And these components creates the IP table rules, which redirects your, uh, which, re uh, which redirects request to your pod. And hence services are nothing, uh, nothing else than the IP table rules. So all those traffic coming from outside to, to the pod, you can consider all those are IP table rules, or you can consider as a, this routing is IP to IP communication. And this is how like uh, uh, Kubernetes API works uh, in case of like master, uh, master node or control node. Even if it is go down, your traffic will be there inside your worker node. So uh, you can consider because it's it's uh, all the traffic and all the rules which are there, those are with your node and not with your control node. So this is what, uh, what I want to explain, like how normal uh, traffic looks like in the Kubernetes cluster. So in the middle diagram, I explained earlier. So if I am exposing any application on load balancer, here you can see load balancer behind the scene creates the node port, node port creates the cluster IP and how this traffic flows. Uh, so if you look at the, if, if you look at the extreme right hand side, there are again, uh, same, uh, you can consider, uh, there are two example, one is traffic coming from the load balancer, another one is coming from the ingress. So in case of ingress, again, uh, I, on top of the load balancer, uh, uh, I'm again using one, one layer called as ingress, where I'm defining the ingress uh, specification, ingress rules. And according to that, that traffic will get routed to your uh, uh, to your actual pod. So from the diagram itself, you can see like you can compare the both both ways, like load balancer and ingress are uh, almost same. We are just adding something on top of the load balancer. So again, uh, uh, ingress uh, controller send those traffic to the kube proxy. Kube proxy has the IP table rule, IP table rules, uh, which resides inside your, inside your node. The node is sending uh, according to IP table rules, sending those traffic to your pod. So I hope like um, you have again now good understanding of how traffic flows inside the cluster with the help of any service and uh, with again uh, ingress too. So let's move on to some some insight about the service mesh landscape uh, so you can see here are some of the service mesh landscape you can see uh, if you want like uh, some of those who are unaware about like what are the service mesh available in the market you can consider one is uh, istio one is linkerd one is consul uh, one is uh, cloud uh, uh, aws native you can call it as app mesh then Apple mesh kong and uh, basically the NY. So all this happening via the NY. So we cannot avoid a service mesh with uh, without NY. So basically these are the some of the offerings uh, or uh, these are the uh, offerings that are available in the market. So uh, before jump into the uh, service mesh, I'm just want to con compare uh, and here you can get some of the idea. So a lot of people might have gone through this image, uh, which uses handle what? like uh, ingress is handling the load balancing ssl termination and uh, virtual hosting only where uh, if you are using istio here on uh, here they are only mentioning few few of the point but there are a lot of things that you can handle with the help of istio those we will see one by one uh, in the talk so again when 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 you can you will get the idea when to use ingress when to use istio and when to use API gateway because there, are, uh, if, if your application is API based and if you want to play around API, then definitely you need to think about the API gateway. These, these are some of the slight difference in between Istio and API gateway. 
so yeah uh, so now uh, come to the topic uh, where uh, everyone is excited and want to learn about the istio uh, so istio so before uh, moving to the topic i just want to say this this may uh, istio completed four years or i could say the fourth birthday so already istio is in market more than the four years now so you can uh, consider like what what amount of people or what amount of uh, traffic uh, is is uh, istio is capable of and how mature is so it's not like uh, within a one or two years back uh, istio was in place it's more than four years now so again next uh, next may it will complete five years so there are multiple contributors uh, even anyone is uh, anyone is want uh, anyone wants to contribute to the istio they can go they can raise the pull request and uh, do the things so let's jump to the offerings that we will get or if i'm integrating the istio with my application uh, you can see some of the advantages that i will get uh, from the istio so first is uh, intelligent uh, routing or resiliency or secure policy or tele telemetry so uh, i'm not going to explain each and every one but some some bold points you can capture it like if i want to do the dynamic routing configuration uh, i want to send the traffic 50% uh, or 90% traffic to service a service b that i can do it with the sto if i want to do a rolling out uh, uh, type of deployment uh, that i can also handle with the help of sto it could be ab type it could be canaries it could be uh, uh, blue green any any type of deployment that also i can handle with the help of istio uh, some some insert i we will see in the next uh, next upcoming slides then uh, we can say resiliency uh, where i don't have to do the co at the coding level uh, all the all the things which is handled uh, it, it will be handled by the istio so you don't have to worry about uh, things like circuit breakers or uh, retries the health check or timeout those will be again handled by istio you don't have to worry about the code you don't have to do anything in the code so again next point is uh, uh, security and policy so definitely it's one of the big constraint in any any of the domain it's not about like bfsr domain or any 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 open source domain but definitely you need to think about the security first so it basically offerings the basic uh, concept like uh, uh, giving you the mutual uh, mutual tls mtls where you can integrate in between the service and all those traffics will flow on your HTTPS only. It will not be over the HTTP. So all those things and uh, encryption at the traffic level, those we can do it uh, with the Istio. Then again, the telemetry. So telemetry is, uh, we'll, we are going to see in the next uh, couple of slides the, how telemetry is ge getting captured. So in between, the, uh, uh, in between those uh, two services, there are multiple traffic is flowing and those traffic we can capture with the help of uh, Istio. Uh, and those, those how it will get uh, captured uh, we'll, we are going to see and uh, the different offerings like key LA dashboard or if i want to trace those raft, uh, traffic i can use the zipkin kind of services and i can trace the traffic so if i have service one to service b or uh, if I, if some user is accessing the service outside the cluster if we want to access the service inside the cluster with the help of telemetry i can trace uh, starting from top to end so again, uh, apart from this, what else uh, Istio is uh, value proportion adding to my existing integration? Again, uh, the secure commission, as I said, right. And again, uh, if if I if I want to mention over here, uh, as I said, like it's it's not relying on your L3 routing, which is which is the native uh, traffic routing in Kubernetes. It's rely on L7 level layer of tra traffic. So all the traffic which flows inside the cluster will be on l7 it's not l3 or l4 routing so uh, you can imagine its application layer and what are the things i want to uh, give it to the pod or uh, i want to authenticate my api or i want to do, do authorization or i want to filter the api i can do it before landing those traffic to my pod so uh, again uh, so this this uh, uh, again uh, uh, apart from that i can do the secure uh, secure of the traffic uh, i can do the with the mtls or external traffic i can encrypt uh, apart from this uh, service level observability as i said with the help of like uh, all those golden signals which are flowing uh, within the uh, from pod to pod or service to service or outside to inside 
those all will get collected and those you can view beautifully on on the dashboard uh, next in next slide we'll see the dashboard how it looks like it's, it's captured uh, it's basic basic capture only but you can see like all those uh, getting captured and then uh, traffic management and operation agility uh, i i'm just going to explain a couple of slides uh, how traffic uh, flows and how we can uh, distribute the traffic and how we can control the traffic inside the cluster so uh, this this you can uh, consider the uh, some of the golden signals i can capture like um, here you can see the overall traffic or some uh, service to service traffic everything i can capture i no need to do any extra extra things uh, uh, de get deployed in the cluster and that will get uh, captured all the traffic and i can show it on the dashboard so uh, this is this is uh, this is what i was uh, talking about the operational agility let's consider i have the application uh, i'm doing the rolling out uh, operations uh, i have an application uh, uh, where i want to send the traffic uh, from a uh, so, uh, you can consider as a uh, canary deployment where i want to only uh, distribute the traffic 5% uh, on my old application 95% on new application that i also can do or you can consider the downside diagram where I have two kinds of user. One is Apple user, one is Android user. My Android user are more uh, than the Apple user. Then also I can do the canary type of deployment where I can split the traffic. So both the versions at the same time I can deploy and I, that can be handled out. And uh, you can consider the scaling of that. Those versions also can be possible with the help of Istio. And uh, uh, you can uh, do the rolling out of the, those features only. Those, so, so those versions, you can do it. Uh, uh, rolling out of the, those uh, versions can be possible. Again, uh, coming back to the security, uh, you can enable the MTLS encryption. Uh, again, uh, you can do the authorization uh, based on what, what you want to do at your organization level that you can do. Again, you can configure RPC level access control uh, for your Test for gRPC APIs that can be possible. Now let's come down to the architecture of uh, Istio. So before moving that, we'll go how it works and the first component, which is the basic one and which is most important in the Istio, is your sidecar. So if you look at the sidecar offerings, so there are like uh, uh, it, it will get deployed with your workload. It is considered, you can call it as a, uh, in Kubernetes, you can consider QProxy is the main component. You can call same NY proxy as a, your uh, Istio proxy or the proxy, which, uh, which will uh, serve the traffic and it will throw the traffic to your pod. And all those uh, policies uh, which I talked, uh, like I want to filter out the APIs or anything that I want to do, I can enforce in, in this sidecar. And sidecar will take care of that again sidecar is uh, connecting so if i want to connect in between application one to b so again it's it's again uh, in, uh, the, those sidecars or those istio proxy will talk to each other and from that what traffic is flowing that i can do it with the telemetry those report i can take it out and i can see what our uh, what traffic is flowing from service a to service b and here the most important thing i don't have to worry about embedding of uh, client libraries so I, I i have not to worry that i need to uh, integrate something uh, with, in, inside my application because it's uh, sidecar is running totally outside my application so if you look at the flows of uh, uh, sidecar first is listen then uh, it care, take care of the route then it, it, it send how it, it comes to know how to send the traffic to the cluster and again at the end at the end level like endpoints are there so hosts, hosts are uh, able to receive those traffic so this is the flow you can consider from listeners to routes routes to cluster cluster to endpoint so uh, this is uh, some of the uh, basic about the ny proxy so there are uh, it's a light very lightweight low memory consumption then uh, more than 100 plus or 1000 plus the testing already done some things uh, which uh, it's it's not uh, owned by Istio community, but it's it's open source. So it's uh, basically developed by a co company called Lyft, and there are a lot of people contributing to NY Proxy, and uh, some of the contribution are also from the Istio side, like fault injection or uh, 
re request tracing with the help of zipkin or traffic routing splitting everything uh, uh, those those contribution is from istio so let's now dig down to the real architecture of the istio where you can see the component architectural diagram here you can see the multiple uh, components so uh, from uh, istio 1.5 i guess yeah 1.5 and onwards so the control plane which you are seeing at the down uh, which contain pilot uh, mixer citadel all this get together uh, with the help of istio d so there are no more components you can see if you go and check the pods which are running inside your cluster for the control plane of your istio you will only see the istio d so inside istio d these are some of the basic components which are running uh, behind the scene apart from that uh, as i said right uh, istio using uh, your sidecar proxies so if you look at the diagram you can see the my application is running along with my sidecars and you can call it as a istio proxy and proxies are taking care of the your traffic and it is sending the traffic to my service services so uh, so i could say the ny is taking care of the networking and the policies which are enforcing uh, uh, in, inside that proxy and it will uh, uh, take care of that those policies pilot is uh, like pushing out those service uh, communication policies so all the policies which you are configuring it is taking care by the pilot so again same uh, if i am enabling the uh, mtls kind of uh, stuff so it will take care by the citadel and and those those uh, those are the things uh, which uh, which will take care uh, by the istio and how this traffic uh, are flowing uh, you can see over here so as i said right the, all those components are get integrated within within the same component called as istio d and if you look at the diagram you can see like how traffic is flowing uh, so if i consider the traffic is coming from outside uh, ingress traffic is coming outside uh, coming from outside and it is not hitting to your control plane here is a major uh, important that you need to consider you can call it as same kind of like a queue proxy which i had mentioned earlier here all the traffic uh, which communicate with each other those are from proxy to proxy so control plane is not taking care uh, uh, taking or intervention in the traffic so once traffic come inside the cluster it will flows to your proxy to proxy and it will go out so if if traffic is going out so uh, this is this is the way like uh, how uh, ingress traffic flows from in, uh, from external to internal pod and from pod to uh, egress so again earlier we see the uh, the traffic how traffic flows uh, in in kubernetes networking so you can compare that that kind of uh, network with with the istio one right now so if you look at the diagram if uh, if you can consider at the load balancer level my user is there and if if you want to access my application and i have integrated my istio with my application so you can see once traffic land so from load balancer to it will come down to istio gateway istio gateways will send the traffic to your ny proxy or you can call it as a istio proxy and from pro proxy to proxy the traffic will get flow so you have two nodes of cluster you have two nginx pod uh, sorry one is nginx pod and i want to route that traffic from nginx to uh, the python pod you can see the traffic how it is flowing and uh, at the same time uh, if you ask me where is now now my kubernetes basic networking so here is the question it, it will not get involved in the, in the routing of the traffic when when you enable the istio on your na namespace so here it is not l3 l4 type of routing it's again now completely on the l7 layer of traffic what are the rules policies everything i configured at the istio level those will take care by the istio so uh, we can see the qproxy components no more in the diagram but if you ask me can i delete my existing service no because istio is again using the your basic services to configure at istio level yeah and again uh, again the question is again same kind of like if if my i already explained like if my master uh, uh, master node goes down what happened same here if you ask me what happened if my control place broke down you no need to have to worry about it because all the traffic rules policies which are there which reside uh, with along with your application in the istio proxy 
so even if if, if my control plane is gone down you don't have to worry uh, only thing is if i am spinning up new application it will get spin up with the istio proxy but it it, it will not have the those policies because it it's with the control plane and those control plane is uh, inserting those policy in my uh, istio proxy so uh, you can compare how traffic flowing uh, with istio and without istio from this and 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 the last thing uh, the traffic management uh, you can do it with the istio where uh, application rollout you can do it uh, in percentage distribution or traffic uh, steering with with content based i have the content based application that i can do and then resiliency and efficiency so uh, resiliency i uh, as i said right for resiliency or circuit breakdowns retry timeouts or health checks those those things i don't have to worry about what application code has i don't have to worry about that because all those things will taken care by the istio again efficiency uh, if you can call it as there are a lot of things like uh, else load balancing tls offload or https or grpc proxying those those are thing uh, taken care by the istio again as i said uh, when when i am using the istio traffic uh, uh, istio networking it uh, it avoids the L l4 traffic because it's not ip to ipv communication now uh, it is uh, leveraging those those uh, kind of uh, traffic routing it's not uh, l4 it's again the l7 layer of traffic so there i can uh, integrate the health checks and everything and those again the if you're talking about the tls those those will be ny using boring ssl so those traffic will get encrypted with your uh, tls and uh, the traffic will flow inside your cluster uh so i hope like uh, you have good understanding like uh, you can compare i already compared like uh, how l7 traffic flows and how l3 l4 traffic flows inside cluster so now again this is again depends on your uh, aspects or your concern what things uh, i want to manage in my cluster i want to do the traffic routing on l7 or not or because again you are adding one more layer in the in the application so definitely it is slowing down uh, the transaction rate so some some kind of latency 300 to 500 millisecond will get added into your uh, uh, transaction so you need to think about that so according to that you can take the decision and uh, you can integrate the istio so yeah that's all about istio thank you Hey Apur, thanks, thanks a lot for for uh, walking us through the Istio and the proxy. So, how many times you you spoke the word proxy? Can you guess it? Sorry. How many time you uh, times you have spoken the word proxy? I'm just kidding. <laughs> no idea. Yeah, yeah. Because there are two proxies. One is Kube proxy. Yeah. One is Istio proxy, and you can call it as Istio proxy is uh, your envoy actually. proxy proxy everywhere fantastic yeah. so i yeah. i maybe i think i i've been watching your watching i was waiting for this session actually so uh, one question from my side like how can one use proxy or like istio with open telemetry like for example if he is building a microservice in infrastructure and he is having you know lots of different uh, uh, backend system maybe in go python golang or uh, whatever right so and uh, this this project like open telemetry which can help uh, uh, solve you the metrics related stuff right instead yeah. of you as a developer coding uh, uh, building you know some uh, some sections in your code which will spit out uh, uh, metrics can can istio help in uh, or how does it work with open telemetry project what's your take uh, uh, if you know i think about that i guess i mentioned it or not i am not sure but if you look at the diagram here uh, my traffic is i said right from ingress to it will go to my uh, proxy uh, istio proxy and traffic will flow at the same time my control plane is talking to my proxies hmm. and it is pulling those data from my proxy so here uh, if i am integrating the kli type of dashboard so kli mm -hmm. can trace all the traffic which are coming from outside to inside to my till my pod so it is mm -hmm. you can call it as a continuous observation or continuous tracing of my uh, traffic yeah and it's yeah, think, basically mm -hmm. the native offerings from the istio uh, so mm -hmm. you no need to do anything uh, apart from uh, deploying the istio 
or anything you don't have to worry or anything extra that you have to configure for telemetry yeah 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 i'm more specifically looking on the on the apm side the application performance mo monitoring stuff like uh, uh, without writing any code can can maybe uh, you know uh, the world of istio can can maybe somehow use jaeger or or uh, or other yeah, tools yeah. from again, again, again for jaeger code. also yeah. basic offerings is from istio so you don't have to do Understood. anything Understood. Yeah. So you can view all those things on a single dashboard. If if it is a Yager dashboard or if it is a KRE, that depends mm. on what type of uh, observation you want to do it. That you can do it mm. again. You can uh, integrate the Zipkin where I can do mm. stuff like uh, circuit breaker or timeout or everything that I want to handle. So here mm. I don't have to worry about the code. It's, it's in which language or uh, I don't have to write any fancy things that will take care of the, all those things. Hmm. All right. Yeah. Very cool. Very. Good. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, Apur, for walking us through. And uh, this has been a great talk.